Hello everyone, welcome to the next class on environment. Well, uh, today we're going to discuss uh, a very small topic, yet an important one, which is coral reefs and mangroves. And these were actually a bit of a current natured topics because coral reefs and mangroves are very very important when it comes to the environment basis because where we have certain kind of current affairs comes uh, now and then on the coral reefs because of the pollutions and everything so now uh, without any further ado now let's start the class well firstly coral reefs uh, well these coral reefs are something which were uh, submarine morphological structure creatures actually they're not even um, you know there are certain kind of a creatures well uh, no need to worry what does this submarine uh, uh, morphological means well submarine in the sense they are uh, in the oceanic form the sub uh, the entirely in the middle of the ocean and morphological is nothing but a very well formed or well structured creatures with the help of organic calciums which was present in the ocean floors so Coral reefs are like the submarine morphological creatures with organic calcium structures. These are actually, uh, you know, very beautiful, natural and, uh, you know, this was actually one of the world's oldest and most diverse productive ecosystem. Well, these coral reefs are, uh, you know, they look very beautifully with certain kind of different shapes and structures. They were actually looks like certain kind of a flower plants or something, which are actually it's kind of an ecosystem like plants or flowers in the ocean. Uh, like in the biosphere, we have plants and everything, but in the ecos uh, on the marine ecosystem, these are the major plants and everything. So that's why these are the world's uh, you know oldest and most diverse uh, ecosystem if we talk about. And well, you know, in terms of biodiversity, as I mentioned, these are actually a marine equivalent of tropical forests, that to rainforest. So, if you talk about um, in the normal biodiversity, like the biosphere that we live on, like we have tropical ra rainforests, like that, these are marine tropical rainforests. So, that diversified and beautiful they look. So, the well, now you got a better picture so how this coral reefs and everything well uh, in this coral reefs we have uh, different kind of uh, representations whereas we have uh, okay now let's talk about the mutualistic relationship that means uh, you know we have a mutualistic relationship between these uh, corals where uh, coral animals which actually depends on the coral reefs and blue green algae which is called uh, Zucanthale, I'm sorry about the pronunciations. I'm very bad in pronouncing, you know, scientific uh, terminologies in uh, environment and biology. So, yeah. So the mutual re mutualistic relationship between the coral animals and blue blue green algae was actually called as, uh, you know, Zucanthale something. Well, as you can see over here, this is the major picture that we you can actually observe. Well, if you guys can see over here, this coral reefs, how they actually formed with the structures and everything. Well, uh, well, as you have seen the picture, well, this actually, these corals actually contains a part of their livelihood uh, from the sea water and, and the remainder which actually comes from the algae that lives on the coral's tissues. Well, as you can see, the coral's tissues. And whereas this coral will actually provide the algae, which is a... Well, this coral will actually provide, uh, you know, the algae with... Uh, and protected and uh, you know protected environment and compounds they actually needed for photosynthesis so this coral will actually provide uh, you know certain kind of a protective environment for algae and not only that in return the algae will actually produce uh, you know oxygen and help the coral to remove waste so that's how there is a mutual uh, cooperation between the algae and corals and the most importantly as i've mentioned the Zucanthale, which actually supplies the coral with, uh, you know, glucose, which actually it requires for the coral to survive. The glucose and uh, 
glycerol amino acids which were actually um, which are helpful and which are the actually the products of photosynthesis so that's why these corals live in very huge colonies and that's how their body is actually attracted to one another so that's why they have in such a very big colonies formation so that's how the photosynthesis and the oxygen was actually generating in the ocean floors well uh, you know what happens see if it's there it uh, that's how the coral was actually important and this is the function of corals but what happens when a coral dies so when the corals will actually dies the other corals grow on the death of the calcareous debris so if the coral was dead the death of this debris the coral debris which is dead on that the other coral will started to form so that's how it is like a recycle there is nothing waste of this corals and this coral reefs where uh, you know they form along the coasts islands seas or sea mountains whereas uh, winds which actually provides the foundation so those are the areas where you can actually find these corals well, i'm going to show you guys how these corals reefs so a border or such kind of a line or a format which formed with the corals was actually called as reefs so this reefs where you can actually see them along the coasts or islands or sea mountains or whenever there is a wind possibility for foundations where you can see them and i'm going to show you guys different kinds of reefs as well and these corals will actually grow the coral growth will actually depends on the calcium carbonate which is obtained from the sea so the growth was actually depends on calcium carbonate which presents in the sea because of that the coral growth will actually happens well we've seen what exactly is this corals and what what they do and how they form well uh, let's talk about the ideal conditions for their growth well ideal conditions in the sense for temperature the it has to be 25 degrees celsius to 30 degrees which is limited in the tropical belt well what happens means if it less than 18 degree celsius or if it's more than 33 degree celsius where the corals will definitely die with that temperature so only with 25 to 30 or else from 19 to 32 it's the max limit for them Thirty was actually the uh, you know a balanced temperature where they can actually survive, and if you talk about the temperature uh, or the saline uh, salinity, where it actually the coral needs actually the saline water with an average of twenty-seven to forty uh, parts per million. Well, we've discussed what is ppm in an earlier class of the salinity, which is parts per million, and well not only that these corals will actually need you know shallow waters which are less than 60 to 65 meters and they uh, they also need the uh, submarine platforms and uh, sediment free and clear water like water which is distributed by the currents and the uh, waves which is far more beneficial and it ensures the supply of oxygen so the supply of oxygen will be much better when the water is actually distributed by the currents and waves in the ocean so these are the ideal conditions for the corals to grow well we've seen what is a coral functions and ideal conditions now let's talk about the benefits like how these corals will be benefited not only for the ocean but for the mankind as well well if you talk about the benefits of corals to the mankind well these actually provides uh diversified of plants and animals and not only that well as you all know the seaweeds which are a very very highly nutritious and healthy food where it's a leafy kind of a vegetable where we actually uh, good for mankind so that kind of a things will also be formed because of this coral reefs and everything so that kind of a diversified plants and animals which were actually produced or uh, you know diversified with the help of this coral reefs not only that uh, these coral reefs will actually act as a storehouse of living resources like fish lots and lots of fishes where these uh, coral reefs where these fishes will go and stay in those uh, coral reefs 
and not only that uh, for a tourism revenue even that is also like because coral reefs are good for surfing as well no um, sorry not surfing uh, for uh, diving sea divings and everything because coral reefs have a beautiful diversified look because of their large colonies and different colors and where you can see a number of fishers and you know where they actually stay over there so it's a very good tourism revenue because of this coral reefs where you can actually go for sea divings and everything and these will actually helps to moderate the atmospheric temperature because they actually helps to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so that's why coral reefs are very very important to stay with the pollution that we have i think we required an entire ocean of coral reefs i, I think that much pollution that we have actually producing and we are living in and finally these coral reefs will actually protects the coastlines from wave erosions not only the soil even wave erosions will actually you know wash off the coastal lines so that's why these coral reefs will actually helps and protects the coastal lines so these are the major benefits which are very very important benefits also because of this corals to the mankind well as i've mentioned i'm going to show you guys with the different type of reefs so these are the different kinds of reefs uh, well as you can see the very first one which is uh, fringing reef where it means a reef which actually grows out from the land and is connected to it so this was actually started to grow from the land and it actually connected into the ocean so that kind of a thing was actually called as fringing reef and the next one it is barrier reef where uh, you know a reef which is actually separated from land by a lagoon that uh, lagoon is nothing but it's a part of a sea which is cut off from the rest of the sea like uh, well if you know this is all the sea where it actually cut off like it's actually different it's kind of a pond which was actually separated from the sea that kind of a thing was actually called as lagoon so the reef which was actually formed in the these kind of lagoons by separating the land separated from land by a lagoon is called as barrier reef now a tall reef well a tall reef is nothing but which is formed away from the coast in deep waters but uh, you know generally which are in elliptical or circular in shape and as it uses the top of the sea mountains to grow whereas it actually encloses with a lagoon in the center so this kind of a thing which actually called as a tall reef and finally the patch reef where these are actually uh, you know a certain kind of isolated reefs because uh, isolated outcroppings because the kind of a patches of these uh, coral which are actually across uh you know they have this close uh, proximity to each other but but physically they have been separated by sand rings so they have been separated uh, in them itself like see if this is a reef in which they have been separated by the sand so this is a reef and here this is a reef and again here this is a reef so that kind of a sand reefs where you can actually see them so that is called patches like patch we all know where you can see in an entire thing where you can actually find a small small patches so exactly that is as similar as it is well these are actually typically found in shallow lagoons which are larger collective leaves or atoll so these are actually you can find them in shallow waters more so these are the types of reefs that you can see now let's talk about coral bleaching well uh, you know this coral bleaching is nothing but uh, it's kind of a damage which was happens to the coral reefs because of the natural disturbances like uh, you know violent storms floods or because of the high and low temperatures or uh, el nino because of the el nino and also and the sub aerial explosions or uh, predatory outbreaks so these kind of a natural disturbances will actually leads for the coral bleaching i mean coral reef bleaching is actually a common uh, you know stress response of corals to because of the disturbances it was actually went through so that's how it shows that i'm damaged like entirely it was bleached like it completely goes out of its color like this bleaching occurs like when the dense uh, you know the densities of the 
you know zoanthophyll which is actually fold like declined uh, because of that the photosynthetic pigments within will actually definitely going to fall because the photosynthesis doesn't work and not only that this kind of a stress causing bleaching is not too severe and if it uh, you know if it decreases it definitely decreases in time whereas the affected corals will actually usually you know regains their self by uh, using their uh, symbiotic algae within several weeks or few months so it takes few weeks or few months by using the symbiotic algae within themselves to regain themselves to back to their positions and this see what happens if this uh, this zooxanthella will actually loss is prolonged that means that if, what if the stress will keep on continues it doesn't re, you know reduce even after few weeks or few months that what happens means then it eventually going to die so this coral will definitely going to die eventually if it cannot regain from um, you know zo this zooxanthella fall where it, it if it doesn't have uh, you know regained or uh, make itself healthy bag again then it definitely eventually it's going to die so that's how this coral bleaching is actually happening like as you can see the causes of this coral bleaching like uh, you know increased ocean temper temperature like because of the climate change which is actually causing the coral bleach as well and run of water and polluted water like uh, because of you know chemicals or poisonous uh, liquids which were actually diluted in the ocean water or else in the shore where you know these kind of corals will actually present so that's how they are actually going to bleached and over exposed to the sunlight and uh, you know radiation because of the beach which ever which is shallow corals where they have exposed with slowly exposing to this coral bleaching even they also goes because of the sunlight excess sunlight and extreme low tides because these corals get exposed to the air and bleach so that's why uh, they are definitely going to get bleached even more quickly well as you can see see how the coral reefs will actually look with a different kind of colors and how healthy and what happens if the coral bleaching will start so that's how it's going to look like a very dry uh, you know dead very ashy or black or you know at least white which is completely seen as you can see it's look like very dead and not so lively to look this will actually so beautiful to look with all the fishes and everything so this is what the coral bleaching will actually affects well uh, whereas in india where you can see actually uh, you know in gulf of kutch lakshadweep we have andaman and nicobar islands near and the gulf of manar so these are the places that you can actually find wonderful coral reefs and uh, whereas in andaman and nicobar where you can actually see a world even most diversified where you cannot find such kind of a coral reefs that's why uh, you know sea diving was actually much more preferred whenever you've gone to andaman and nicobar islands because the coral reefs that present in andaman and nicobar islands cannot be seen anywhere in the world so that is the major speciality when it comes to these andaman and nicobar islands of our country so if anyone are planning for a vacation to andaman and nicobar islands so definitely go for this coral reefs sea diving because this was really really um, a very diversified one where you cannot find them in world well that's about the coral reefs now let's talk about the mangroves which is another kind of an ecosystem that we've discussed in uh, geography classes yet uh, again we're going to discuss them according to the environment and ecosystem basis well mangroves are actually um, you know a large extensive type of trees which were uh, whereas with medium height where these kind of a uh, shrub looks one which actually grows in the saline waters where you can actually find these kind of uh, mangroves in west bengal in our country where they are actually called as sundarbans and these were actually grows um, you know in the kind of tropics and subtropics which were uh, between the latitudes of 25 degrees north and 25 degrees south so this is where these kind of mangroves were actually you can see them well as we know that these are actually a saline coastal sediments habitats and these mangroves are actually salt tolerant trees and they are also called as halophytes halophytes is nothing but salt tolerant trees like that means they are uh, adapted to live in harsh 
coastal conditions like they are contain a complex salt filtration system and complex root systems so that's why they can actually grow in that kind of a harsh conditions that means they are also able to adapt low oxygen like they can actually survive in low oxygen conditions of uh, waterlogged muds even in the mud positions even with low oxygen conditions they are uh, uh, you know form or uh, train themselves to grow in such kind of uh, harsh and low oxygen conditions as well so that is the major uh, uh, speciality of these mangroves now let's talk about the characteristics of these mangroves like uh, these are evergreen land plants like growing on the sheltered shores like deltas east trees bays or creeks so etc so these are the or uh, barrier islands so these are the places where they actually uh, you know form themselves and uh, the other one which is like psychologically adoption to this sal salinity stress which is the major speciality for them and they actually need abundant sunlight and has the ability to absorb fresh water from saline water source so that means they actually absorb fresh water even from the salt water so if they have this kind of uh, you know salt infiltration system in their roots itself so they need abundant sunlight and they can actually take uh, fresh water from the saline water itself they are like neotropes which is nothing but blind roots like uh, they have these special roots which are like a uh, prop root or neotropes where uh, are also called as tilt roots which help them to impede water flow and stabilizes the coastal shores they actually stabilizes the coastal shores with that roots not only that they also acts as a breeding ground for fishes where um, the major fishes will have uh, uh, breeding things over these mangroves areas not only that they also moderates the monsoonal tidal floods because they actually stabilizes this coastal conditions and not only that they reduces uh, you know inundations of coastal lowlands they also protects the coastal lands from tsunamis hurricanes and floods they also helps in uh, you know controlling these uh, coastal soil erosions and uh, they enhances natural recycling of nutrients and they supports uh, numerous numbers of flora and fauna and uh, uh, you know avi fauna like edge effect can be seen here like entirely everything can you can see over there and they have they they even supply raw materials like even though they have these kind of special things they even supply raw materials like wood not only wood they also supply medicinal plants and edible plants and they are also a recreation and tourist attractions because the uh, salt water route content will actually done because of this so these are the major characteristics of mangroves but you know even though they have such kind of uh, you know major uh, uses they do have certain kind of threats from the human interference because some ecosystems will definitely don't require any human interference so in that cases mangroves are the one which they definitely no need any uh, human interference because you know rather than the human interference will be an help they actually turns out into a threat so this is one kind of an ecosystem where it actually you know because of the human interference there has been a threat for mangroves well as we've seen the human interference whereas like uh, you know approximately 35% of the mangrove area was actually lost that too in the last severe decades uh, that in the 20th century we have lost uh, over you know a 35% of mangrove area because of that human interference and as you can see the UNEP which is nothing but United Nations Environment Program along with Hamilton in 2013 where they started uh, uh, you know estimations of this uh, shrimp farming which actually causing a quarter of the destruction of this mangrove forest because people started to grow shrimp uh, you know people started to have this shrimp farming in this mangrove areas so because of that uh, 
this UNEP and Hamilton, they dump the survey and they get to know because of that, uh, like overall there has been a quarter, like approximately a quarter of this uh, mangrove forest were actually destructed. And uh, for the latest update, like in 2010, by the World Mangrove Atlas, WMA was actually defined as World Mangrove Atlas, which actually indicated uh, uh, a fifth of the world's mangrove ecosystem has been lost since 1980. So, since 1980, the fifth largest one of this uh, fifth largest one in the world of the mangrove ecosystem the fifth largest one has been destroyed since 1980 so the, where this world mangrove atlas was actually defined it so they are just only left with four more I don't know how much this four more also survived how far not only that they also destroyed for uh, conversion of area for like agricultural purposes fuel uh, fodder or mining or oil spills aquaculture like for shrimp farming and also the fertilizer industrial purposes these were actually uh, other things because of that uh, which this mangroves areas was actually destroyed so far and we do have certain kind of mangroves ecosystem in our country so well as you can see in the map uh, in our Indian map where you can see these kind of uh, mangroves like well as you can see over here so we have in Gujarat, whereas we have mangroves in Gujarat and uh, we have Ratnagiri mangroves, Goa mangroves, we have Kaveri areas, Andaman and Nicobars and uh, the major biggest one which is in Sundarbans. So that's why it has a very big dot over here. So Sundarbans in West Bengal and we have Mahanadi mangroves, Krishna and Godavari also have mangroves. Kaveri, uh, Andaman and Nicobar so these are the major ones like the major ones as you can see according to the dots over here where uh, we have Andaman and Nicobar Island Sundarbans was the majorest one and then Gujarat and Andaman and Nicobar so these are the major ones if, it, if we want to talk about according to the uh, size and uh, the, occup uh, the occupancy of the places so Sundarbans in West Bengal, Gujarat and Anaman and Nicobar Islands have the major mangroves. Well, uh, that's all with the topic. Uh, well, as I've mentioned in the very beginning that uh, this is a very small topic, but yet it was very, very important to know because there has been many current affairs as you can see in this uh, because uh, if something happens in the mangroves or, well, as I've mentioned, this kind of uh, WMA, World Mangrove Atlas, if it released another more report or if there is any kind of uh, coral reefs were damaged overall in the world or how much percent of coral reefs were actually damaged and done thing and even the mangroves so that's why they have been very very important for current affairs as well so well uh, let's see let's have a recap well we've discussed about coral reefs where the mutualistic relationship between a coral algae which helps for the photosynthesis for fishes animals and everything we've seen ideal conditions for the growth and benefits and types of reefs that we have seen over here we have four types which is fringing barrier atoll and patch and then we've discussed about the major uh, problem which is coral bleaching it was actually a natural occurrence only because uh, corals will die and uh, the new corals will actually form on the dead corals but this coral bleaching was actually not happening with the natural occurrences because human occurrences were much more comparing to the natural occurrences well as you can see the before and after pictures like over here like the beautiful coral reef over here and which was a dead coral reefs you can see over here and then we've seen where are the major ones and as i mentioned anuman and nicobar has the major speciality and then we started discussing about the mangroves where the very much very first special things about these mangroves where they can actually live in very harsh conditions even with the saline water intakes and we've discussed the characteristics of them and we've seen the threat from human interference and we've discussed where uh, these uh, or else we've seen where else these uh, mangrove kind of ecosystems are present in our Indian subcontinent so uh, I hope you all understand do let me know if you have any doubts and go through certain kind of previous year questions on these topics and prelims and not only in the preliminary examinations even in the mains so 
you know you get to know so what is that much important to remember in the current affairs things so that's all for today thank you and have a great day